So here I just summarize um, these properties. So as I, so Tether is the main uh, stable coin um, and they're backed by dollar reserves. So one important point um, to note is that not all of the dollar assets they hold are reserves. So there is some commercial paper and less liquid assets that Tether holds. And so this is the subject of much uh, concern, particularly for regulators. Um, how liquid are these assets? Um, are these assets, say, vulnerable to uh, um, sort of market forces? And then, so there's a lot of concerns about the backing of Tether. Um, so if we move to the decentralized uh, stable coin, so DAI is the leader in this space. And so in, in contrast to Tether controlling all of the reserves, now individual investors deposit collateral and then issue DAI tokens off that collateral. So that's why it's a decentralized arrangement because every individual investor is essentially an issuer of DAI, right? Now, the, it's over collateralized. So in order to borrow one DAI, token, you may have to deposit, say, $1.50 or $2 worth of Ethereum collateral. And so it's over collateralized. The reason for that is because there's a chance that ETH may collapse in the future. So you need to over collateralize your position as insurance against default, right? So, so this is a way to kind of um, try to ensure peg stability is to increase the amount of collateral that you need to post. But of course, if you are depositing a lot of ETH collateral and then borrowing only a fraction as DAI, then it's very uh, capital inefficient, right? So you're not able to generate that much uh, stable coins um, if you have a very large collateral ratio. So algorithmic uh, stable coins are the third one. As I mentioned, they're typically unbacked. Um, and the drawback is that if there's no reserves, then a speculative attack can lead to a collapse of the peg, right? Because essentially the issuer does not have any dollar reserves to be able to meet redemptions.